Uh, friends, good morning to all of you. Your director said, uh, Dr. Sudhir Jain, bigger IIT and smaller IIT. Is there anything like that? <laughs> I don't know. You become very big IIT and thinking by thinking by action. Okay? You can be 500 today, you can become 1000, does not matter how big, how small. IIT, if you want to become great, and your thinking has to be great, your creativity has to be great, and your action has to be great. Okay, that design, whether you are small or big. Now friends, I would like to greet uh, Dr. Sudhir K. Jain of the new IIT Gandhinagar, <laughs> and Professor G. K. Sharma, and Professor Vasne Guha, and Dr. Emma Patel, and uh, student uh, announcer, Sir Sveta of Ganguli, and faculty, staff, and student testing with cash for all of you. My best wishes to be number one IIT among IITs. <laughs> Friends, I am indeed delighted to address and uh, mostly I would like to interact with the students and also I saw faculty, very young faculty, some of them, and faculty members of IIT Gandhinagar. My greetings to all of you. Dear friends, today I would like to share with you a few thoughts. The subject I have selected is National Mission and the Unique Youth. National Mission and Unique Youth. That is, I would like to see every one of you. Uh, unique person, okay? Unique. And I'm going to tell you how to become unique also. Unique. Now, you are in a state, for what I meant to be, you state, which is known in the nation uh, for its development and progress. A dynamic state, according to me. I teach here, I am under that quite often, I come here. Uh, close to your campus, be the best institute of management in the nation, the best institute of design in the nation, world class industry. It's all in the in the in the environment you have. It is your challenge now to emerge as a number one institute of technology in the nation. What will be needed is the convergence of technology. That is what's needed is the convergence of technology. Something you have to do different. You know there are faculties and faculties, faculties. And there's iron curtain between the faculties. But whether you like it or not, the convergence of technology is taking place. So I want to talk to you, the convergence of technology. As you know, the information technology and communication technology have already converged, leading to the information communication technology, ICT, as you all know. Now, information technology combined with the biotechnology has led to the bioinformatics. Similarly, the photonics is grown out from the laboratories to converge with the classical electronics and microelectronics to bring in a new high-speed option in consumer products. Flexible and unbreakable displays using thin layer of film on transparent polymers have emerged as a new symbol of entertainment and media tools today. Now, the nanotechnology has come in. It is a field of the future that will replace microelectronics, according to me, and in many fields with the tremendous application potential in the areas of medicine, electronics, and material science. I am sure about the use of nano robot for drug delivery. When nanotechnology and ICT meet, when nanotechnology and ICT meet, an integrated silicon electronics, photonics are born, I can be, and it can be said that material convergence will happen. With material convergence and a biotechnology linked, a new science called intelligent bioscience will be born, which would lead to a disease-free, happy and more intelligent human habitat 
with the longevity and the high human capacities. Convergence of bio, nano, and info technologies, that is uh, bioscience, nanoscience, innovation science, bio, nano, info technology can lead to the development of a nano robot. Nano robot, which I saw, nano robots when they are injected into a patient, my expert friends say in Seoul, Korea, not Korea, it will diagnose and deliver the treatment exclusively in the affected area and then the nanorobot gets it adjusted as it's a DNA-based product. I saw the product sample, one of the laboratories in South Korea, where best of minds uh, with multiple technology work with the target of finding out-of-box solutions. Now friends, I the last uh, two weeks back, I was in Harvard uh, my experience at Harvard University, I thought of sharing with you. There I saw the convergence. The convergence of science is a, is a reciprocating. Reciprocate. Convergence of science is a reciprocating. Let me give an example. Recently I was in the Harvard University where I visited laboratories of many eminent professors to the Harvard School of Engineering, the Applied Science. They call it the Engineering Applied Science. All the faculties have come under Engineering in the Applied Science. I recall how Professor Hong Kong Park showed me his invention of nano needles, uh, which can pierce and deliver content into individual targeted cells. And then nano bio is trying to push it together. That's how nano particle science is shaping the bioscience. Then I met Professor Vinod Manoharan in Harvard, who showed me, on the other hand, the biosciences is in turn shaping nanomaterial science as well. He is using nanomaterial to design self-assembling particles, self-assembling particles. When particular type of DNA is applied on a, on a particle at the atomic level, he is able to generate, Professor is able to generate a prefix behavior and an automatic assembly from them. This could be our answer to self-assembly of devices and colonies in deep space uh, without human intervention as he mentioned by Dr. K. David Drexler. There's a book on that. Thus, within a single research building of our I saw other, I saw how two different sciences are shaping each other without any iron curtain between the technologists. This reciprocating contribution of science to one another is going to shape our future and the industry needs to be ready for it. Friends, are you ready to break down the iron curtain existing between the various technology groups? Of course, the first row people have to do that. Now, now a new trend is emerging. The aspect being introduced is that of ecology, as you all know. Globally, the demand is shifting towards development of a sustainable system, which are technologically superior. This is the new dimension of the 21st century knowledge society, where science, technology, and the environment will have to go together. Thus, the new age model, new age model now, next two decades, Thus, the new age model would be four-dimensional, bio, nano, info, and eco-based. So, you have to change, you have to change yourself. Now, I'm going to talk to you, friends, my favorite area, you need to. Now, I don't see light here, no? Is there any light? No, no light here. Now, normally, friends, dear friends, when you look up anywhere, even your hostel, when you see that, up, you see light and bulb, isn't it? That has to be there, any room in the hostel, you have to see light and bulb. When you see the light and bulb, you remember a unique fellow. Who is that? Oh, you, you know, you have exactly said Thomas Alva, he said. Now, every day in your hostel or classroom, you are seeing the aircraft flying over here. As soon as the aircraft fly, you remember two guys, right with You know, I brought two friends I brought with them. They are great guys, one fellow I am, another man, another fellow Lucknow. Each of the two 
Well, very good for it, not one. Two, but very good for it, they have. But the thing is, I silenced them before starting. <laughs> and also they have a telephone in their room, in your room also. And so, as soon as telephone, you remember a guy, Alexander Graham, Alexander Graham Bell. Now, there is one Indian scientist, scientist when everybody considers a sea travel as an experience and voyage, and the world scientist traveling from London to Calcutta, uh, he was reaching on evening in the Calcutta seashore, and he found that the horizon was blue, sun was shining on side, and also the sea was blue. He asked a question, why horizon, sky is blue, and sea was blue, he got a Nobel Prize that was that question. Immediately went to his laboratory and tried to find out it is due to the back scattering of the light. Now, at the, uh, do you know about a man of science and about a life completely dedicated to innovation, creativity and scientific research? His most famous success was the astrophysical Chandrasekhar unit. He discovered Chandra limit. By using Chandra limit for certain mass of the uh, stars, you can calculate how long the sun will shine. <laughs> and uh, you can calculate now, it takes 10 billion years, the sun will shine. If the sun does not shine, you know what happens. You have to find another, another star and another planet probably. That's the situation. Now, he got a Nobel Prize. His student got Nobel Prize nearly 20 years before him. And he got Nobel Prize at the age of 75. So Chandrasekhar, we always remember uh, the Chandra limit and the black hole. So, so far I give you 10 names. 10 names starting uh, from the Thomas of Edison to Chandrasekhar Subramanya. They are all unique persons, is it not? Is it not? Yes or no? Yes. They are all unique. You remember. I don't need to tell you. You remember because they are unique. So, friends, so far we have studied those who walked into unexplored past and strive to be a unique and are remembered for their contribution to the human kind. The inventions, is carefully you know, to me, the invention discoveries have emanated from creative minds. Invention discoveries have emanated from creative minds that have been constantly working and imaging the outcome in the mind. The telephone Graham Bell was imaging this telephone. Apart from creative and design and working, and right for them was imagining that though they were flying when the other people, when um, uh, when the when the uh, professor Kelvin. Uh, for Royal Society said, no, no, no material heavier than air can, can be flown. And he grew it, he grew it. So because he was a unique person. So invention discoveries have emanated from creative minds that have been constantly working and imaging the outcome in the mind. With imaging and constant uh, effort, all the forces of the universe work for that inspired mind thereby leading to invention and discovery. The question is, are you willing to become a unique personality? How many of you, how many young fellows want to become a unique personality? Show me, show me your hand. Okay. So all of you, uh, all of you want to become a unique, a unique personality. It's a good dream, good, good uh, thoughts. And so far, Met 12 million youth in India for the last one decade in your age group. I learned every youth wants to be unique. That is you. But the world around you is doing its best day and night to make you just to everybody else. You follow? Home game, neighbor, see the neighbor boy or girl how they do first, the second, third, you be like them, they will say. Come to college, come to the school, university, anywhere, they always compare. Okay? 
forget about all of them. You try to be a unique guy. Will you? Will you? Now the challenge, my young friends, how to be unique? The challenge, my young friends, is, is that you have to fight the hardest battle which any human being can ever imagine to fight and never stop fighting until you arrive at your destined place that is unique to you. Oh, how do you fight it? You can't take the gun, you are all good for us. <laughs> My friends, what will be your tools to fight this battle? There are four criteria. I have studied all these many people. There are four criteria for building a unique personality. What are they? Have a great, not small aim is a crime. Have a great aim. Have a great aim that is, you want to do an out-of-box solution, a creativity. You have a great aim and, uh, and, and then it's not sufficient to have a great aim, continuously acquire the knowledge. You have to acquire the continuously knowledge. And of course you have to work hard, sweat like what you are doing now, and persevere to realize the great achievement. Persevere. Take any work you do. My professor Satish Dawa told me, he gave me a big job to me. And to make a bear the rocket system, put a satellite in the orbit. And uh, I had a, a long back. Yeah, you were not even idea forms in 1970s. So when they gave the project, I, he said, I'm going to give you this project, a lot of money, first time in here, great. And I will you, empower you with a great management plan. I empower you with human power, but 1980 you must launch a satellite using your rocket. And I saw, I studied the profile of Israel at that time. There were a lot of senior people who talked. Those days I was a handful of. So all of them, very senior people. And then he just needed thousands, thousands of scientists, engineers, and staff, and multiple institutional help. Can I do it? Can I do it? Can I do it? He said, okay. Then he gave me one advice, you know. Since I did not respond immediately for Satish Dhawan, he was the chairman of Indian Space Research Organization. He gave an advice. If you don't do anything, no problem. Okay, it's true. If you don't write an exam, you don't need to worry about research, yes or no. <laughs> but if you don't do anything, no problem. But if you do a big mission in life, definitely there will be some problem. But problem, you don't make the problem your captain. You have to go to make the problem. You, are, you should become the captain of the problem. Defeat the problem and succeed. This advice he gave in the 1970s. And still holds good for me in all the transformation, turbulence, the laminar flow which took place in the life of the human beings. Now, friends, I'm sure IIT Gandhinagar will provide all of you a conducive environment to realize your goal of becoming unique you. Now, I would like to narrate a technique, technology used, uh, technique used by the professor to inject urgency in that completing our task in time. You know, long, long ago, in Chennai, Madras Institute of Technology, I was a student, 1954-57. There I had a very tough professor to handle. Uh, I hope you are not having such a professor. <laughs> <laughs> His name is Professor Srinivasan. He is a Caltech product. <laughs> so, he, he, is, uh, he gave me, out of uh, last year of Madras Institute of Technology, he would take six months project to give you. So we were nine students, uh, and uh, in those days, we have eight professors were teaching at nine students, eight professors. <laughs> and two are foreign professors, a German professors. Now, they were, when they, then they took, I don't know, how many, uh, in my professor, Rabandin, Dr. Rabandin, 7.30 to 10.30, can you imagine, three hours class, can you imagine? Three hours class, continuously three hours class. <laughs> so, my professor, he wasn't called me, for, he said, for us, he gave a, he himself an aeronautic designer and expert in laminar flow. And uh, he told me, 
that nine fellows, you are going to make a project. Uh, he named the project Low Level Attack Aircraft. You know, we are students studying propulsion, studying aerodynamics, studying structure, studying control, studying guidance. He gives a, a design of the design of the low level attack aircraft, Mark Old Okay, he was specification. Now my nine followers, four from Punjab, okay, Punjab, Kashmir. <laughs> and the three followers uh, from Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka, would be allowed. And myself in this part of the country. So nine followers we started one day. day Nowadays, you guys have got everything, a PC in front of you today. We, we have slide rule where you see, you know? You know, have you heard about slide rule? If you are in a museum, you can find out. You can know? using <laughs> <laughs> the slide, slide And uh, we did not have, uh, you can design uh, through computer, screen, everything. In those days, we had a huge drawing board. So we were uh, working on the drawing board that is that. So first month over, second month over, third month over, most of my friends used at the, at the electric train. Saturday Sunday they would disappear. I was the leader of the team. You could not go for pictures Saturday Sunday. <laughs> so we had some time. So but that to get exactly after the fifth month, uh, my professor landed there. See, he was going to tennis uh, Sunday. He came to a laboratory. He saw, he said, hello. You are uh, work hopeless. I will rate it hopeless, he said. <laughs> and that's okay. The yeah, professor always say that. The <laughs> next year, what he said is very dangerous. He said, Kalam, I'm going to stop your scholarship. <laughs> and if you don't, in a few weeks' time, you don't cheat yourself. In many six months' time, that's near it. No, I mean, a Madras Inter Technology is very difficult to go scholarship, okay? Because very costly. I tell you, you guys not, you don't pay much in this, an IIT, isn't it? What do you say? Eh? Eh? It's normal here. But uh, they are abnormal here to pay because of private institutions. In those days, now it's a government institution. So we worked hard. I ensured these fellows don't put pictures on that place. And then my team started working and understood. I will be the leader of the team who do his scholarship to work with me. And finally, we brought him to the uh, yeah, preliminary design. Yeah. And uh, yeah. next week, we landed my professor, saw that. He said to Kalam and the team, you have done a fantastic job. Congratulations. And he didn't stop there. He took his hope to all of us, uh, gave us a good Metros coffee. And uh, so we enjoyed. But what I want to communicate that nine students working for a project called a low level attack aircraft, what did we learn? We learned system design, system integration, system management. All this three, that six month program, we finally, when we got up for the institution, we are carrying not aerodynamics, not structure, or mechanical engineering, or material, or chemical engineering, or electronics, and we are carrying the knowledge of system design, system integration, system management. Wherever I went afterwards, first thing they will give me a system design, or system development, or system integration, or system management. So friends, remember, when you go on a ID campus, you will always you will have the uh, challenges of reflecting what the system development. So system design system, integration system management. So I, I believe it is a very important to recognize it's a, the, and also the professors and the director IIT Gandhi Nagar that we ensure the multi-disciplinary uh, project each one of you in the team, six to eight members should do so that that project, you may do it, if you do it fantastic, it should be multidisciplinary, not the same discipline where you are studying. So this is the message I would like to hear. Can they, you go out on this campus as a system designers, as a system uh, integrators and system managers. Now friends, for the past several years, I have been discussing with the young and experience on the vision of the nation and how each one and how each one, whatever we, he saw their professional orientation can contribute to the pillars of development. I got ten pillars of development. 
as I, as I already say, the pillars of Indian development profile 2020, 2020 means year 2020, there are the nine years are there, not a problem. Now what are the, the ten pillars of development? When you go out on this campus and uh, any organization will give you, any one of them or a number of the ten pillars of development. Number one, a nation where the rural and the urban divide has reduced it in life. Uh, today we've got 600,000 villages in our country. So 700 million people live there, 70, more than 70 percent of people live there. But uh, how do you bring that? How do you bring the physical connectivity, the electronic connectivity, and knowledge connectivity so that the economic connectivity comes to the people? Next word, the nation like this equitable distribution and adequate access to energy and quality water. A nation where agriculture, industry, and service sector work together in Sufani. In Gujarat, you know, I have worked when I was teaching in the IIM Ahmedabad. One question came to me how? Fourth country, the agriculture uh, below three or four percent growth rate, and this state they are having nine percent. I hope you know, but you are aware of it. You are all aware. They are having seven to nine percent of GDP growth rate of agriculture. Then they do a professor in IIM, and the minister of agriculture, minister of Gujarat government, they work together to do this miracle. So there's a book also on that. So I suggest that uh, any work what we do should have an impact in the society. Now the uh, a nation where the best of healthcare is available to all, a nation which is the best destination for the most talented scholars, scientists, and investors, a nation where the governance, governance where the governance is responsive, transparent, and corruption free. A nation where poverty has been totally eradicated, illiteracy removed, and crimes against women and children are absent, and that means the society is alienated. A nation that prosperous, healthy, secure, devoid of terrorism, peaceful, happy, and continues with a sustainable growth path. Sustainable growth path. Last one, a nation that is one of the best places to live in and is proud of its leadership. Now I said all good things. Now how do we achieve that? To achieve the distinct profile of India, the ten pillars of development, we have the mission of transforming India into a developed nation where we have identified five areas where India has a core competence for integrated action. One is agriculture and food agro food processing, value addition to agriculture produce. The education health care, particularly women education, is very important to balance family and also good society. Then information communication technology to connect the 600,000 villagers uh, for, uh, for tele and satellite communication. Reliable and quality electric power and surface transport infrastructure for all parts of the country. That's one of our big area. Self-reliance and critical technology because sometimes when we make what we need for defense, they put us back. Technology denial. That's why we, we have to we have to challenge that denial. That's why self and critical technologies. These five areas are closely interrelated, and uh, by progressing in a coordinated way, leading to food, economic, and national security. Now, friends, I give you how you have to transform yourself to meet the professional challenges as a system technologies. Friends, with this background, uh, please study carefully each of the pillars which I have described. You will find some interesting challenges. Now, the, they are one of the important tools for executing India 2030 and the 10 pillars of development of the tools. What is called Pura? Pura means providing animal amenities to rural area. Uh, they will plant about 7,000 Pura the whole country. I visualize IIT Gandhi Nagar about uh, go away from the capital and uh, deep in Gujarat uh, villages and uh, take uh, about 20 villages and uh, plan how to give the physical connectivity, the electronic connectivity 
and knowledge connectivity so that the economic connectivity is not for the dirty villages. Then Gandhi has a, uh, this uh, Gandhi life that IIT Gandhi and Pura become your laboratory, a Pura laboratory, societal laboratory for students and professors will have a nice time. So friend, now let me take you to the type of society we are entering and challenges. That's called knowledge society of this century. The world in the 21st century will be a knowledge-based society with a multiple opportunities. I was reading a book a few, few weeks back. Name of the book, Empires of the Mind. Empires of the Mind by Dennis Mackey. I don't know how many of you read it. It's a paperback. It's a fantastic book, each one of you. The name of the book, Empires of the, Empires of the Mind by Dennis Mackey. This book gives what type of new world which we are facing now, what was yesterday and what is today. I have modified certain points of the order to suit our conditions. I have also added a third line uh, relates to the action of an education institution like I. It specially says, the book says, what worked yesterday won't work today. That's the message throughout the book. What worked yesterday won't work today. Now let's see what are the items. Number one, yesterday natural resources define the power. This thing is true. Uh, because for example, the coal is a natural resource. Solar power is a natural resource. And the mineral is a natural resource. So today, 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 yesterday natural resources define the power today. Today. Today knowledge is the power. Oh, without all this material, natural resources, there are nations doing fantastic. Japan, Singapore, many, many nations with the knowledge is of power, if we knowledge is everything, particularly for India, 600, 600, 600 million people, young followers, you know, and girls. So that's a powerful resource on the earth, above the earth, under the earth. So today, Knowledge is power. That means the educational institution like IIT, Gandhi, Nagar will be a powerhouse for knowledge. Second one, yesterday, hierarchy was the model. You know, hierarchy was the model. Today, CLG is a mandate. That means the educational institution will be an enabler of interaction of the multiple faculties toward the mission goals. Yesterday, leaders commanded and controlled. Today, leaders empower and coach. There is no commanding. Potential leaders will be empowered through exposure to the needs of the sustainable development. Yesterday, shareholders say first. Today, customers come first. That means the education should inculcate the sensitivity to customer needs. Yesterday, the employees took order. Today, yesterday, the employees took order. Today, teams make decisions. This I witnessed in many places. The education institution can inject the team spirit. Yesterday, seniority signifies state, seniority boss. Seniority signifies state. Today, the creative person managers give the leadership. Today, creativity drives the status. You look at the body's age or the age. The education institution is the breeding environment for creativity. Yesterday, production determined availability. Today, competitiveness is the key. That means competitiveness is powered by Competitiveness is powered by research. And the institute has to have the motto of teaching, research, teaching. Good research, good teaching comes out for good research, good research comes out for good teaching, particularly IIT environment. Yesterday value was extra. Today value is everything. Objective value judgment are to be introduced in the education. Yesterday everyone was a competitor. Today everyone is the user of that Educated customer is also from education institutions. Last year, yesterday, profits were earned through experience. Uh, today, work with integrity and succeed with integrity. Today, today, work, work with integrity and succeed with integrity. Very tough, very tough. But that's a, that's the environment you are going to face in this century. So, the education value system is need of the world. Now friends, conclusion. Finally, I would like to ask you, all the young fellows, I will ask you, 
What you would like to be remembered for? You must ask. You go to your computer, put it on the screen, or take one page, you write it. What I be remembered for? Each of them. What would you like to be remembered for? You have to you have born yourself and shape your life. You should write it on a page or screen. That page may be a very important page in the book of human history. And you be remembered. You be remembered for creating that one page in the history of the nation. Whether that page is the page of invention, the page of innovation, or the page of discovery, or the page of creating a societal change, or a page of removing the poverty, or the page of fighting injustice, or or page of planning and executing mission of networking of the world. Now friends, I am sure you would like to do something different. So that then you become unique, out of box missions. What are they? I'll do some sample. It's not the final, but you can decide what you want. You you have to walk on your shadow, your own shadow. But I can give some suggestion. So will you be remembered? Will you be remembered for a visionary action for the nation, like Professor Vikram Sarabhai, Dr. Gobi Baba, Professor Satish Dabas? Or doctors Patari in the field of space science, nuclear science, different science, and of course Swaminar and the agriculture science. Will you remember for introducing new industrial system, system product, which represents a convergence of technology for low low cost, high efficiency product like bionic and you know people the blind they go blind. A new to multiple technology converging. A bionic eye comes in. If the nerve is okay. You can the site can be restored. It's very costly, but India will make it cost effective. Will you be remembered for creating a company which finds a place in the top hundred of the Fortune 500 companies from India? Will you be remembered for facilitating the creation of pura complexes? You are providing urban and rural area in the neighborhood of your workplace or your daily place. Will you be remembered for working? And creating a validated system for the production of 340 million tons of food grains and value addition through food processing by the year 2020, because we, our demand from 235 tons of food will go to 320 by 2030. Will you be remembered as a discoverer or an inventor of a new phenomena in basic science? Then you get a Nobel Prize. Will you be remembered for promoting energy independence for the nation through the development of a renewable energy system, going away from the fossil fuel? Will you be remembered for promoting energy independence for the nation through the development of a renewable energy system, like solar power, a nuclear power, wind power, and biofuel? Will you be remembered for working on creating a carbon neutral orientation wherever you are? Then I address last time. In uh, Ahmedabad, I suggested Ahmedabad declared by 2020-2025 it becomes carbon neutral capital. Then will you be remembered for the action-oriented clean home, clean environment, and clean state and clean nation? I'd be very happy if you guys write your thoughts, particularly the graduating student, to my email id apj at the rate of abdulkalam dot com. It's a good mail I get. I have correspond such a set of good books also. My best wishes to all the members of IIT Gandhi Nagar. Success in the mission of developing quality technologies, human resource for the nation. May God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Now, last time we we awarded some votes for engineering students. Engineer, would you like to take? Yes, yes. yes or no? Yes. You can sit down. Take. Engineering. You are not taking breakfast today. <laughs> Engineering. Engineering. And technology. And technology. Is a lifetime mission. Is a lifetime mission. See, Chandra Shekhar Subramanian. His student got an award prize when he was 50 years old. But he has been working for years on scientific mission continuously. That's why I am saying engineering and technology as a lifetime mission. And then now uh, next one, I will, I will work, work, work and work and, work and, succeed. and succeed. Wherever I am, 
Yeah. A thought will always come to my mind. That is, what process, what product, I can innovate, invent, or discover. I will always remember that let not, let not my king to days, he is painted green. I realize, I have to set a great technological goal that will lead me to think high, work and persevere, persevere to realize that goal. My greatest friends, my greatest friends will be great scientific and technological minds, good teachers and great books. I firmly believe no problem can defeat me. I will become the captain of the problem. I will become the captain of the problem. Defeat the problem. And succeed. I will work and work for removing the problem faced by the planet Earth in the areas of water, energy, habitat, waste management, and environment through the application of engineering and technology. I will work for making a district in which I work as a carbon neutral district. My natural flag, my natural flag flies in my heart and I will glow into my nation. I bring glory to my nation. Thank you very I think five questions for a few minutes. Okay. Sir, okay. you talked about being a unique person. What are your views on a person who is jack of all and master of none? Well, then he will jack of all for like that. You know, as simple as it is. But uh, the issue is, with the 600 million youth we have in that all 600 million youth, it's very difficult to become Thomas or Edison or Tino or the Ramadio. Okay or uh, Satyashya Subramaniam or Satyashya Rama. That you want to have a dream. If you don't have a dream, you don't go near that. Okay? Dream should be seen that that you don't allow you to sleep. Okay? Such a dream is like that. Okay?
And the head they want to approach God approach. He said, Sir, I gave uh, permission. He said, uh, you, and they all took a oath. The oath was, I worked with integrity and succeeded with integrity. I didn't ask you to take the oath because you are all good guys. So, you know, I say, they took a oath. I worked with integrity and, you know, I gave officers. Take the oath. I will work with integrity and succeed with integrity. This girl asked me, you, know, you are forced just to take a oath. I work with integrity and succeed with integrity. If I post it in a corrupt option, what are you doing? No, what I do, I want to tell you all young scholars and young girls. You know, I worked with the government 60 years. Okay, 64 years. Uh, 30 years with the state place of social organization. 30 years with the defense of such a development organization. Then we say this atomic energy. Yeah, it was more science and technology and all. Now, in the 60 years, I managed a lot of money, okay? My project cost a lot of money. A lot of power, because I am a poor fellow when you are managing your future of the that. But in 60 years, I have not seen any political pressure or any bureaucratic pressure to anybody approaching. What does it mean? It means uh, you have to have a ring of a brand. You must have a brand. Of course you will go through some problem. Posting will be different, one year delayed promotion, all sorts of things will be there. Or you have four years, you do five years, if you have straight percent. So all this is impossible. But uh, the finally, we have a truth to it. That is, we have each one, each side technology startup, uh, bureaucrat, he should you should build a brand around you. That brand is, I work with integrity and security. Okay? If that brand is there, you I fly, I fly, I fly, I fly. Thank you.